Hi everyone, this is Denise with Liquid Color and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a color chart. Um, I promised this video uh, to you back when I reviewed my Mgram watercolors and um, the reason I chose the water, the Mgram watercolors is because I only have nine of them. It'll be really simple to make our, our chart here and uh, I want to see what they are capable of doing. I did a little bit of color mixing in the the review and while painting, but I wanted to really see what combination I have here. Um, so there's a couple different types of color charts that you can do. Um, the one that I made with my original palette, this palette had 18 wells and 17 colors at the time that I did this chart, and I would mix together the two different colors and chart them first on this side where I would use full strength or as close as I could get to full strength. And then I'd use the watered down version on the other side of the chart. If you notice, there are two um, places where two different colors meet. So for instance, if I have Windsor Red with green gold, I get this brown, this light brown here. Um, and then it also meets, if I come over to Windsor Red and go down to green gold, there is a watered down version of this same color. So you get a good idea of the full range of strengths that you can get from your pigments. The other type of chart that we are going to do today, just so I can show you a different method, is we're going to do half of the chart with more of one color than the other, and on the other half of the chart we're going to do the opposite. So for instance, if we take that Napfall Red and mix it with an Ultramarine Blue, I might do more Ultramarine and less Napfall here, and then if we flip that around, and come over to the Napfall Red, mix with Ultramarine down here, we'll do more Napfall Red and less Ultramarine. And that way we get more of a range of colors um, than just, just the one version in the other chart. Now, this isn't a full comprehensive chart by any means. If you wanted to be even more in depth, you could go ahead and mix every color with another color, and instead of doing a chart, you could do like lines or lists of paints where you would have um, say trans iron oxide on one side and dioxazine purple on the other side and you gradually change them over from one color to the other and that way you would get a full version of those colors a full spectrum of, of the different types of colors you could get there you could also take those same colors and do a watered down version right underneath them um, and then you'd have a, a huge range of, of an idea of what your paints can do. But today we're just gonna stick with the chart and try and make things simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you how I'm mixing these colors and I'll do a couple of them so that you can see. And then I'm gonna speed up the footage so that you don't have to sit here for hours with me while I paint my swatches. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, I have absolutely no idea what happened to my audio. As I mentioned in a previous video, I got a new video camera and it worked okay for that first clip. There was a little bit of a hum in the background, but the second clip that I started recording, absolutely just full blast uh, <laughs> had a hum and you could barely hear me. So I'm doing a voiceover. Hopefully I can keep up with all my original talking points. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully we can get started here. So. If you notice that first square is where the trans red iron oxide meets the trans red iron oxide. So it's just the pure pigment out of the uh, palette there. I think what I was originally saying here was um, that in the previous chart we did the saturated colors on the top and the desaturated colors or um, the watered down versions on the bottom. And on this chart it's going to be different. So the axis that goes across the top of the video is going to be the higher ratio in the mixes and then the axis going down on the chart is going to be the the lesser of the the two in the mixes so when I start off by doing the trans red iron oxide with the nickel quinacridone gold in this first square because the red iron oxide is on the top axis we're gonna use more of that color and less of the uh, quinacridone gold color. So I'm just going to mix on my palette here. I'm um, starting off with the red iron oxide and just a little bit of the um, nickel quinacridone gold. And then I'll go ahead and paint that square in. Ideally you'll want to use a small flat brush for this. Um, I didn't use my flat brush because I only have a half inch 
and I didn't want to pull that much paint out of my palette. Uh, if I had something a little bit smaller, I would have used that. I went ahead and switched brushes though. Um, this brush is a little easier to control and I figured that, that would be a little bit better for this application. So now that we're moving across the top of the axis, I'm mixing that same mixture but with more quinacridone gold. So it's going to have more of the gold and less of the trans iron oxide because the trans red iron oxide is on the axis that goes down. Hopefully that makes sense and it will continue to make more sense as we go through more of our color chart. So now we're going to move down. I'll show you one more. This is going to be the mixture of more red iron oxide with less Hansi yellow because the red iron oxide is on top and the Hansi yellow is going down the axis. So you'll notice it's a deeper color closer to the trans red iron oxide because the yellow has less of a tinting strength. On the top axis, we're going to mix more of that Hansi yellow in with the trans red iron oxide to make a lighter version of those same two colors mixed together. So I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this all the way across and all the way down for my first color mixtures. And then as we continue further on in the video, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a pause so I can show you how we start the next row of colors and then I'll let it play out again and uh, check back in with you at the end of the video. So I'm getting ready to move on to my next uh, set of colors, which is going to be mixed primarily with the nickel quinacridone gold. Um, and after clearing off the palette, I'll have space to do that. I like to put out a couple swatches on my palette so that I have some mixing wells ready to go and I don't have to keep getting the nickel quinacridone gold every single time. And, but I'm just going to keep moving across the top of the row and then down the rows. Uh, with more of the quinacridone gold in the vertical column and then more of the other pigments going across the row. So that's the system that I'm going to be using for the entire video and uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'll check back in at the end and wrap up with my final thoughts.
Okay everyone, so we finished with our color chart. It's a 9x9 nine nine grid that has 72 unique colors from 9 original colors. And in this particular palette you'll notice that most of the chart is warm colors, browns, um, uh, yellows, oranges, reds, and much fewer of them are cools like the blues and the greens. And that has to do with my original base colors, uh, which can be seen in the middle here, or I can hold up my palette so you can see them a little bit better. Six out of the nine colors are warm, so most of our, our palette's going to be warm, but if you have more cool colors in your palette, then many more of them would be cooler. Uh, you can do this for any set of paints that you have as a reminder, or just to show you again, this is the chart that I have for my previous palette, and you can see that there are a lot more blues on here, so it's just going to change depending on what paints you have in your collection. If you are interested in this set, um, you can check out my full review of the M Grams. The link is in the description below, as is a link to an Amazon listing where you could purchase these paints if you're interested in this set or a similar set. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. As always, I always appreciate uh, you stopping by. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.